What's up guys, welcome to 61st Ruby tutorial. This is again Shrix from Smarthood. In the previous tutorial, we discussed about time class, about date class and about date time class. Now, also in previous tutorial, we discussed the syntax, how to initialize the time, all these parameters, what are these and what does this time zone stand for. Now, let me quickly show you the codes how to initialize the time object then after that we will come to operations part now if you write like this all the parameters here and print the time object then what will be the output just save it and execute it yeah this is the output this is year month day then this is a time then this is a time zone that we specified here plus two zero 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 like this now what if, if we erase this time zone? Let's check the output now. Let's save it and execute it. Yeah, here instead of plus 200, we are getting plus 0530. It is my current time zone at which I am located. So plus 0530 is my current location. And rest of the things remains same. Now, what if, if I don't initialize the time here? Let's erase it and save it and print it yeah by default ruby initialize the time object as 0000, 00, 00, 00 and 00, 00 because we have not mentioned any time here now what if if you just write 2017 now let's save it and execute it yes again this is our current time zone then this is a time initialize and this date is actually 2070 1st of January like this January 1st so like this we are getting the output all these things we have discussed in the previous tutorial now let's just remove this 2017 also now let's save it and execute it it is actually going to give what it is going to give us our current time so the current date is 2014 May 25 then whatever 8.57 am 4 second and this is our current time zone like this now let's check few operations on this time object that we can do let's just add another statement put us time dot year let's save it and execute it yeah the current year is what 2014 then current month let's save it and execute it current month is May that is 5 then current day again save it and execute it the current day is what 25th today is 25th May like this now similarly our minute and also second so hour minute and second quite simple I'm not going to illustrate all the things yeah the second is what 43 like this now let me show you a few other things let's say WD let's save it and execute it it is showing zero this means today is what today is Sunday so when we write WD then it is just going to show 0 for Sunday similarly 1 for what Monday then it goes on like this till what 6 for Saturday like this 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 days of a week starting from 0 which is Sunday and ending at 6 which is Saturday now today is actually Sunday I'm working on Sunday also now let's write instead of W day let's write Y day Let's save it now. Again, it's 145th day of the year starting from 0. W day starts from 0 to 365 like this. So 25th May is actually 145th day of the year like this. Now let's try something different now. Let's write microsecond USEC right let's save it and execute it it is showing some value it is actually the seconds after the epoch now the epoch is actually 1st january 1970 from 1st january 1970 we had 
दीज मैनी सेकेंड्स इफ यू रिमेम्बर गाइज आई टॉक अबाउट द इपॉक इन द लास्ट टूटोरियल प्लीज गो बैक एंड चेक इट आउट नाउ सपोज वी वॉन्ट टू चेक वॉट टी डॉट मंडे क्वेश्चन मार्क सेव इट एंड एग्जीक्यूटेड येस इट इज शोइंग फॉल्स बिकॉज टूडे इज संडे इट इज गोइंग टू शो वॉट ट्रू वैल्यू बिकॉज टूडे इज संडे या ट्रू लाइक दिस नाउ देर इज वन मोर थिंग गाइज DST DST stands for actually daylight saving time daylight saving time shows there are extension of time in the evening that is sunset is taking place very lately so at this time we are having DST or not let's save it now executed it is showing false no today is no DST so this time zone has no DST no daylight saving time like this Let's try now. Let's say subsec. Yeah. Let's save it and execute it. Yeah. We are getting a rational number. It actually returns a fraction for the time value. Let us try time dot two underscore a. Yeah. Let's save it and execute it. It actually returns what? See, this time dot two underscore a returns all the things. as an array that is stored in the time object so in the time object we have storing what this whole parameters then this 41 is what seconds then 30 minutes then 9 is hours then 25 is what day 5th may 2014 that is whatever then 0 is what 0 stands for sunday 1 for the 5th day that is y day then false is showing what dst is not available here and This plus zero five three zero shows Indian Standard Time because this zone belongs to India. That is why Indian Standard Time it is showing. Now, let us try two underscore i. Let's save it and execute it. It is going to return a value. This is actually number of seconds after the epoch. That is after the epoch. How many seconds have been passed by? Now, let's try two underscore f. Let's save it and execute it. Yeah, it is going to show the exact number of seconds that has been passed by after the epoch. That is, these many seconds dot these many fraction of seconds has been passed by after first January nineteen seventy. Like this. Now let us do something new. Let's first erase it. Let's write time two equal to. Let's say time plus. Let's write randomly something two five nine two zero zero like this. Okay. Now let's put as time, then put as time two, like this. Save it and execute it. Yeah, we are getting two values. This time two is actually twenty eighth May two thousand fourteen. We have added these many seconds to what to this date. Let us do some operations. Let's write. T time time two. If you remember, guys, in hash, I taught you how to compare to hash like this. Now let's save it and execute it. Sorry, I have to write put s here also. Let's write put s. Let's save it and execute it. I'm getting minus one here, guys, because here LHS is smaller than RHS, so we are getting minus one. Suppose I write here suppose two and here time. Now, let's save it and execute it. I am getting a positive integer one because here LHS is greater than RHS. Now, if both the times are equal, then actually it is going to return what? It is going to return zero. Let's check that also. Let's save it and execute it. Yeah, it is returning zero because LHS and RHS are equal. Like this, there is another way to compare the two time object. Let's say time dot equal. Then within the bracket, just try it. Time two. Let's save it and execute it. Yeah, it is showing false because time object is not equal to time two object. So we are getting the output as boolean value. That is false. We can also compare the two time by just writing. Let's say equal to equal to time two. It is a conditional statement. Let's save it and execute it. Yeah, it is showing false. Let's say. Time is time smaller than time two? 
let's check it out yes true time is smaller than time 2 let's write greater than again save and execute it is going to show false because time is not greater than time 2 like this so pretty simple guys we talked about many operations on time pretty boring guys but these stuffs are quite important if you want to become a ruby developer so catch you guys in next tutorial and please don't forget to subscribe and do share my video and please leave a comment below my video this is shrex from smartherd signing off